Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sandeep, Associate Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, we are going to discuss about the interpretation of phase diagrams. So, in the previous session, we have discussed how to draw the phase diagrams for the solid liquid and combination of solid and liquid. So, how to locate the compositions we have discussed in the previous session and also what is the temperature? At what temperature? What are the compositions we have discussed in the previous sessions? Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about the interpretation of these phase diagrams. So, in general, for the phase diagrams, what are the three main parameters which involve for changing of the microstructure or the characteristics of any material are the temperature, pressure, and the composition. So, these three are the main parameters which influence the microstructure of any given alloy or a metal. Suppose if you change the composition in any given metal, what happens? The microstructure will change as well as the material characteristics will change. Also the properties of the material will change. And coming to the temperature, if you raise the temperature, if you increase the temperature step by step, what happens there? The solid material is slowly is converting into another phase. So, because of this change in temperature, what is happening? There is some change in phase. Because of this change in phase, we are having the change in the characteristics of the material, change in the microstructure of the material and change in the mechanical and physical properties of the material. Similarly, if you change the pressure, if you change the pressure, what is happening? Stresses are involved in the body. So, because of that pressure, again the microstructure will change. Similarly, the characteristics of the material chain and uh, another uh, more mechanical properties will also differ. So, these are the three main parameters which influence the any type of given material, whether it is a solid material or a liquid material or a gaseous material. So, based upon these three parameters, what to do the interpretation, how to interpret the phase diagrams, we will see one by one now. So, for a binary system, so what is binary system? If two compositions are varying and another component is said to be constant, that means if two parameters from the three parameters, what are the three parameters we have? The temperature, pressure and the composition. So in these three parameters, if the two parameters are said to be varied and another parameter is said to be constant, then that type of system is called as a binary phase system. So for coming to this binary system, what is happening here? The composition and the temperature, the composition and temperature are said to be equilibrium, are at the equilibrium position and the pressure is said to be constant. So, for this, we have the informations available. So, first one is the, the phase that are present. First point, that means what type of phase we have in that, whether it is in the form of solid phase or liquid phase or a gaseous phase. So, first we have to check the phases which are present in the system. So, first one is the phases. Second is the composition of these phases. So, we have to know what is the composition. Suppose if you take the copper and nickel. So, what is the composition of that copper and nickel at some particular temperature that you have to identify. So, that is the second point. And the third one is the percentage of fractions of the phases. How much percentage we are getting in terms of the composition as well as the phase with respect to the temperature. So, this is the third information which is available in the interpretation. So, if you want to interpret any phase diagram, so these three parameters you have to consider. First one is the phase, what type of phase is present and second is the composition, how much composition is there at some particular temperature and the percentage of fractions. You need to calculate the total percentage of fractions present in that phase with respect to the temperature. So, in order to find these three informations which are available in the phase diagram, what are the procedure you have to follow? We will see step by step now. So, the procedure for making the determination of all the three parameters, all the three informations, we will take an example of a copper and nickel system. Based upon this copper and nickel system, we will try to find out all these three 
what uh, the phase present, the composition which is present, as well as the percentage of fractions in the phase diagram we'll see. So first coming to the phase present. So how to identify the establishment of this phase present is very very relatively simple. Why? Because if you consider any system, if you consider any system, in that system we have different phases based upon the temperature as well as the combustion. So generally we have a solid phase, a liquid phase and a gaseous phase. So these are arranged depending upon the temperature and they have its own boundaries. So depending upon the boundary, we can easily find out at which phase the body is present. So first one is the phase present. In that phase present, we can identify what type of phase with respect to the temperature as well as the composition of the body. So suppose if you take copper and nickel, so these two are mixed together in a liquid. So at some point of time, these are combined together and form as a liquid. So that means they, these two copper and the nickel are dissolved together and form a liquid formation. So that is in the liquid state, that is liquid phase. Now, if you still increase the temperature or if you change the parameters from those three, the pressure, temperature and the combustion, what is happening? Slowly this liquid formation, what is happening? Slowly it is converting into nuclide. That means some solid particles are being formed. So what is happening there? Slowly that whatever the liquid formation is there, it is being converting into solid formation. So because of the formation of nucleus. If you still further increase the other parameters, slowly this converted nucleates are com uh, completely forming into a solid formation. Okay, so like that you have to identify what type of phase it is, whether it is a liquid phase or liquid plus solid phase or the solid phase based upon the phase boundaries. So generally these phase and phase boundaries can be identified with respect to the temperature as well as the composition which is taken into the alloy or the metal. So, since we are taking nickel and copper as an example in this case, so for an example, an alloy composition of 60 weight percentage of nickel. So, since here we have two metals, two alloys that is copper and nickel. So, when you add these two, the total should be 100. That means the total, whatever the 60 percentage of nickel you are taking, then the composition of the copper should be 40. Similarly, if you are taking the nickel as 70, then the copper should be 30. So like that, the average, the sum of the, uh, between these two should be equal to 100, so that you can easily find out the fraction or the compositions with respect to the temperature. Now, in this case, we are taking 60 weight percentage of nickel and 40 weight percentage of copper at 111 degrees centigrade. So at that temperature, what is the composition we have to identify? So how to identify that composition with respect to the temperature means you have to draw the phase diagram. So from the phase diagrams, you have to draw the uh, horizontal lines along the x-axis and along the y-axis to locate that point as well as in order to identify what is the composition. Suppose if this point is exactly in one single phase, in one single phase means either it should be a liquid or solid that is called a single phase. If it is double phase means mixed up of both solid and liquid. So in some cases, if it is a single phase, it is very easy for us to describe the composition or the temperature or to locate that point. But if it is comes under uh, double phase, that means if any point is lying in between these two phases, that means solid and liquid, then it is very difficult for us to find out the location as well as the composition. So for that, double phase uh, point which is lying in between those double phases, we have other another methods to identify the composition or the temperatures. But in this case, if any point is lying in a single phase, either it should be as liquid or solid, then it is very easy for us to identify the location as well as the temperature and also the composition of that component. Now, since the 60 per weight percentage of nickel and the 40 weight percentage of copper at 1100 degrees centigrade should be located at point A in the figure. So what is the figure we have here? So this is the figure. So along the x-axis you have the composition weight percentage of nickel as well as the copper. 
and along the y axis we have temperature so here you can see the copper weight percent is starting with 0 slowly it is increasing 20 40 60 80 and 100 and in the same way the river reverse direction the nickel is starting with 100 here it is going to 80 60 like that that means it is getting decreasing so copper starts with 0 20 40 60 80 100 and nickel is going reverse direction and copper in this direction that means if you add these two composition at any point at any point so you have to get 100 percent that's why so suppose if it is copper is zero here the nickel should be 100 okay this is copper we are having zero and nickel should be 100 similarly if the copper is 20 here the nickel should be 80 and if the copper is 40 nickel should be 60 and the copper is 60 nickel is 40 and the copper is 80 nickel is 20 and the copper is 100 nickel should be 0 so like that at any point and at any point if you add the combination of these two composition it should be equal to 100 so in such a way that you have to plot your x axis the composition weight percentage of nickel as well as the copper now, if you come to the y-axis, if you come to the y-axis, we have the temperature here. That means you have the temperature slowly increasing. So, in the previous sessions, we have discussed that the solubility limit, solubility limit increases with the temperature. So, what is the solubility limit? Where the maximum limit of the so, uh, two particles are mixing together. If you further increase the composition, that won't mix. So, that is the maximum limit, solubility limit. Further, it won't limit. Okay, further what you will get? You will get both the liquid as well as solid combination. Before the solubility limit, you will get complete liquid. So, in the same way, here also, since we have taken copper and nickel as the example to describe the phase diagram and how to interpret the phase diagram space. So, suppose I want to locate the point A as shown in this figure. So, this point A I have to locate at some point. So, how to locate that point? Now see here, in this case, you have a liquid phase, alpha phase. Alpha phase is nothing but the solidus phase. Alpha is solidus phase and L is the liquid phase. And here you can see alpha plus L. That means it is having combination of liquid and solid at this junction. Now, if any point is lying in one phase, one phase means what? Either at A phase or L phase. Then it is very easy for us to identify the temperature or the composition with respect to the point. But if any point is lying somewhere in between, suppose if you take this point B, then it is very difficult for us to find out the composition. Why? Because this point B is lying in between these two phases, liquid as well as solid. Then it is very easy for us, uh, it is not difficult. It is very difficult to find out the composition parameters in this zone. So, since an example is taken at point A, so only we are discussing about the point A. So, this point A is lying in a single phase. Why are you telling it is single phase? Means it is in the solid phase. That's why it is a single phase. Now, how to locate that point? So, what you have to do? Just you have to stretch the horizontal lines along the y axis. And just drop from the point A to the y axis. So, if you stretch the line along the y axis, you'll get the temperature. So, your temperature is 1100 degrees centigrade. So, from here, you can easily tell that the point A is located at a temperature of 1100 degrees centigrade. Now, if you drop a perpendicular on the x axis, on the x axis, you can get the composition of the point A with respect to the temperature. So, what is the composition here? Copper is having 60 and nickel is having 40 weight percentage so like this you have to tell the composition of that point a with respect to the temperature as well as the composition so like that it is very easy for us to locate or it is very easy for us to identify the compositions as well as its temperature if it is lying in a single phase so see this example the point a since it is lying in a single phase so just we are stretching the lines along x and y axis to get the 
compositions as well as the temperature. Now, in the same way, if you take some point C somewhere in this liquid zone, so this is the point C. So I have to know what is the temperature of that point C and also what is the composition of that point C, which is lying in the liquid zone or liquid phase. So again, since this point C is in the single phase, okay, then what you have to do in a single phase, you have to stretch the horizontal lines along the x-axis to forget the composition. And if you stretch the horizontal line along the y-axis, you will get the temperature. Now you can see how we are drawing this at point C. So point C, you are directly drawing a horizontal line towards the y-axis to get the temperature. And if you drop a perpendicular line along the x-axis, you will get the composition. Now the point C, so what is the horizontal line along the y-axis? You are getting it as 1500 degrees centigrade. So the point C is at 1500 degree centigrade, the temperature. And now what is the composition? Since you are dropping this exactly on the x-axis, so what you are getting here, the copper is 50 and nickel is 50. So copper percentage 50 of percentage of weight of copper and 50 weight percentage of nickel. So like that, you have to show the compositions along the x-axis and the temperature along the y-axis with respect to that point. And this point should be in a single phase. Either it should be in a liquid phase or in the solid phase. But the point B, what are the point B you are saying in this figure? This point B is lying in between the solid and liquid. That means at that junction, at that junction, you are having both the liquids, both the liquid and the solid. That's why it is difficult to find out the compositions. So in order to find out the compositions as well as the temperatures, which is lying in here in the solid and liquid line, we have a tie line method. So with the help of the tie line method, it is somewhat not that much easy to find out the composition, but with respect to those tie lines, it is somewhat clear to find out the compositions as well as the temperature that we'll see in the coming slides. Now, the first parameter in the interpretation of phase diagram is the phase present. So what we have seen in the previous slide, what type of phase is present we have seen, whether it is a liquid phase, solid phase or the combination of this. And also with respect to whether it is a single phase or double phase, if it is single phase, it is very easy for us to find out the composition as well as the temperature. Now coming to the phase compositions. So in order to describe any material, we have to tell the compositions in terms of percentage. That means if any metal you want to describe, how we will describe? You have to describe with the compositions. So this metal will having 50% of nickel and 30% of copper and another 20% of some alloys. Like that you have to tell. So if you describe the material with respect to the compositions, then it is very easy for us to calculate the mechanical strength, can calculate the mechanical properties. You can identify the microstructure Okay, so in order to get all these informations, one need to tell the correct compositions of any component which is used in the required applications. Now, how to determine those phase compositions in a given metal, we'll see. So the first step in order to determine the phase compositions is to locate the temperature and composition point on the phase diagram. So this is very, very important. If you locate that point with respect to the temperature, as well as the composition. So temperature lies along the y-axis and the compositions lie along the x-axis. So one need to identify that exact point and from that point you have to draw the temperature as well as the composition points in order to get this how much amount of compositions are present in that metal. So as we discussed you have different types of methods in order to find out those percentage of compositions whether it is a single phase or double phase. For single phase, you have one type of method and for double phase, you'll have another type of method to identify those percentage of combinations. Now, if it is a single phase, it is very easy uh, just by stretching those lines along the X and Y axis. But coming to the double phase, we have the tie line method. So now in this example, we are considering 60 weight percentage of nickel. So where is the 60 weight percentage of nickel? So you can identify here along the x-axis you have 
60 weight percentage of nickel. And what is the other percentage you have? Balance 40 percentage of copper should be there. Why? Because the combination, the sum of the two com compositions should be equal to 100. That's why if it is a 60 weight percentage of nickel, then the 40 should be the composition of the copper. So 60 weight percentage of nickel and 40 weight percentage of copper at 1100 degrees centigrade at point A. So at this point A, you have 60 weight percentage of nickel and 40 weight percentage of copper at 1100 degrees centigrade. So at this point, so at this point you have this alpha zone. So now in order to get that, what is the composition? So only the alpha phase is present. Why means here you have only single phase. What is that alpha phase here? Alpha phase is nothing but the solid phase. Since the solid phase, only single phase is present, we can easily stretch or you can stretch the lines along the x and y axis, the horizontal lines, and you can find out what is the composition. So the having the composition of 60 weight percentage of nickel and 40 weight percentage of copper at that point. So at that point, since you're dropping the line like this, so you're getting the 60 and 40. So this is how you have to locate the compositions with respect to the temperature at that point A. And also since it is lying in a single phase, that is very, very important. Since it is in a single phase, that's why we are just simply stretching those horizontal lines to find out the composition. Now, for the NLI, having the compositions and temperatures located in two phase region. Now, all the uh, previous uh, sections or uh, slides what we have discussed is based upon a single phase. Now, any point which is coming in between the two phase region, what is the two phase region? In the two phase region, you have both liquid and solid. So, suppose if that point B, what are the point B we are seeing in that figure? That point B is lying in between these two. That means it is colliding with liquid and solid. So for that, how to identify the composition and how to identify the temperature can be calculated with the help of the style line method. So what is the style line means? You have to draw the horizontal lines in between these two faces. That means I have the faces like this. The point B is lying at this point. Now what you have to do, you have to draw a horizontal line this horizontal line has to intersect. So this is my x and y axis. Now I'm drawing a horizontal line like this. So this horizontal line has to intersect both the faces. That means the liquidus line as well as the solidus line. So two points are getting here. But in the single phase, you're getting only one point. Okay, so this point B, since it is locating in a two phase uh, model, so what you have to do, you have to draw a horizontal line. This horizontal line has to intersect the two faces. So this intersection of the horizontal line between the two faces is called as a tie line process. Okay, based upon this tie line method, we have to identify what is the composition and what is the temperature at that given point. Now these tie lines, what is the importance of these tie lines means these tie lines extend Across the two phase region, you have to extend, you have to stretch the uh, horizontal lines along the uh, two regions of liquid and solid so that it will somewhere at some point it will intersect. So after intersection of those points, you have to drop again the perpendiculars towards the x axis in order to get the compositions. So since we are getting two intersection points for that point B, so how many compositions we can get here? We will get two compositions. So in a single phase, we are getting only one composition, but coming to the double phase or two phase method, we are getting two compositions of copper as well as the nickel. So that is the main difference between a single phase and a double phase. And in a single phase, directly we are stretching those horizontal lines to find out the composition and temperature. But in, in, in case of this double phase or two phase, we are stretching a horizontal line and this stretched horizontal line has to intersect has to intersect the two phases that is L and alpha that is liquid and the solid phases and from those two intersection points you have to drop some perpendicular lines towards the x-axis that means towards the composition axis 
in order to get what is the total composition along x and along the two points. Now, to compute to compute the equilibrium concentrations of these two phases, what procedure you have to follow again? You have to see. So, first point is what a tri line is to construct across the two phase region at the temperature. Now, this is my x y axis. So, along y axis you have temperature and x axis you have the composition. Now, what you are trying to do? You are having this. So, here you have the alpha region, this is the liquid region, and this zone is L plus alpha, that means combination of both. Now, what to do? First procedure you have to follow. First step to follow to draw the tie line. This is my point B where I want to locate or identify the composition and the temperature. Since my point B at, at this point, so what I will do? I have to draw a line, a horizontal line, and this horizontal line has to intersect the two faces. Here it is being intersecting at this point and another point. So this is my first step. So I am drawing a straight line. So what is the second point? The intersection of the tie line and the phase boundaries on either side. So you have to identify, you have to identify where are the intersections on that phase boundary. So where are the intersections? I have intersection at this point. Another point is this. So I have two intersection points on the faces on the either side. That is the second point. And the third point is perpendiculars are dropped from these intersections. So you have to drop a perpendicular lines exactly along the x-axis. So perpendiculars are dropped from the intersections, from that intersection point to the horizontal axis. Why only horizontal? In order to get the composition, in order to get the composition, we are dropping those perpendicular along the horizontal axis, from which the composition of each of the respective phase can be identified. So based upon the dropping of the horizontal lines, uh, perpendicular lines on the horizontal, you can easily identify what is the percentage of composition at this point and at this point. So this is how you have to draw the tie lines if the point is lying in a two-phase or a double-phase diagram. So first point is what? You have to draw a tie line. That means you have to draw a horizontal line where the point is lying. So since the point B is lying here, you have to draw a horizontal line. So what is the second step? You have to identify the intersections of this line on the either side of the faces. So how many intersections do you have? You have two intersection points on either side of the faces. Now from those intersections, the, what is the third point? From those intersection points, you have to drop a perpendicular line along the horizontal axis to get the compositions. So since the horizontal line is having the compositions, that's why we are dropping the horizontal uh, perpendicular lines along the horizontal axis in order to get the composition. So this is how we are dropping the perpendiculars on the horizontal axis to get the composition. So after dropping, we are getting the composition. So now you can see clearly in this figure. So to explain further, uh, to get the clarity, we are taking some example. Uh, considering 35 weight percentage of nickel and 65 weight percentage of copper at 1250 degrees centigrade. That means the point B, you have to look at. So exactly, so this is 1200 and 1300. So you're getting 1250 at this point. 1250 degrees centigrade. So at 1250 degree centigrade, the point P has to be identified. So what you have to do, first of all, first of all, since at 1250 degree centigrade, the point B is lying between these two faces. You can see clearly between those two red lines, you have this point B. That means between the liquid and solid phase, alpha and liquid. At this phase, the point B is located. So we have seen the three steps. First is what? First step is what? You have to draw a horizontal line. That is a tie line from that point B. So we are drawing a horizontal line from that point B. After that, second point is what? You have to identify the intersections of that tie line between the two faces. So where are the intersections you are getting? So one is the here, another point is at here. 
So two intersection points you are getting. So after the two intersection points, you have to drop the perpendicular along the horizontal axis. So from this point, I am dropping the perpendicular lines, two perpendicular lines along the horizontal axis. Why along the horizontal axis? To get the compositions. So we are getting the composition of liquid here and composition of alpha that is solid here. So two values we are getting. So that's why this point B exactly at 35 percent weight of nickel. So this is the 35 weight percentage of nickel. And what is the remaining percent? 65. 65 of copper. So total again 100. It should be 100. So at this point, at temperature of 1250, you have to find out the compositions. Now since it is this point B is exactly in between these two phases, you are first drawing the tie line and this tie line has to identify the intersection points and from that intersection points, I am drawing this perpendiculars on the horizontal. Now, after constructing this tie line, you have to identify the composition. This is not, you have to determine the phase compositions. So now, at that point, at this point, what is the composition of the liquid? See here, the perpendiculars from the intersection of the tie line in the liquid boundary meets the composition axis at this point. So this point. So at this point, you are getting 31.5 weight percentage of nickel. So, so since we are dropping the perpendicular line at this point, so here we are getting 31 weight percentage of nickel. So what is the other percentage of uh, copper should be? So since it should be equal to 100, so it should be the remaining is what? 68.5 weight percentage of copper. So at this point of intersection, at this point, you are getting the CL value composition of liquid as 31.5% of nickel with 68% of copper. So this is how you have to get the composition. Now other intersection point. So this is another intersection point where the solidus uh, zone is there. Again from this zone, you are dropping a perpendicular at this point. So C alpha. So what is the composition at that alpha zone, that is a solid zone? We are getting 42.5 percentage of nickel. So what is the remaining? You will get 57.5 weight percentage of copper. So this point. So this point represents for these compositions and this point represents for these compositions. So like this, you have to identify what is the compositions of the point B or any point which is lying between the two phases. Okay, first thing you have to note that you have to draw a tie line and this tie line has to intersect the two phase regions and from that phase regions you have to draw the perpendiculars on the horizontal line in order to get the total compositions. So in this case, since we are taking the point B at 250 degrees centigrade with 35 percentage of copper and 65 percentage of nickel. From this, we are drawing a tie line and from the tie line, you are getting two intersection points and these two intersection points, you are dropping the perpendiculars on the horizontal line and here we are getting two compositions. Since it is a two phase, you are getting two compositions. But in the previous case, since it is a single phase, we are getting only the composition but single, only one composition we are getting. But in this case, we are getting two compositions. So that is about the phase compositions. Now, how to determine the phase amount? How much amount of these compositions are present in that uh, phase diagram? So if the composition and temperature positions are located within the two phase region, so it is becoming more complex, is it not? When you compare to the single phase, uh, it is very easy by dropping those horizontal lines. But coming to the two phase region, it is very easy. It is not that much easy to identify those compositions, percentage of weight of compositions. That's why we are using the uh, tie line method. And by drawing these tie line methods, you have to follow some rule. So that rule is called as a liver rule method. So what is the again liver rule? So you have to follow the, some procedure. These steps you need to follow, five steps you have. First one again, similarly to the tie line method, what we have done, the same way almost you have to 
do this liver rule also well again in a two phase method the temperature as well as the compositions are varying then you have to go with this liver rule method so what you are doing in this liver rule method the tie line is to be constructed across the two phase region at the temperature of the alloy in the same case how we are drawing the tie line between the two phases the same way you have to draw the tie line in between the two phases that means you have to draw a horizontal line which is crossing that point some point given point across those two phase regions now from that the second point is what you have to give the overall compositions on the tie line so this step is somewhat different when you compare with the previous uh, tie line method so tie line method and river loop method are almost same but you have some changes in this so in tie line method first point is same in the same case of liver rule also we are drawing a horizontal line in the second point in the tie line method what we are doing we are trying to get those intersection points but in this case in the liver rule method the second point is what we are trying to find out the overall alloy compositions how much composition is there at that phase so that's why we have to give the overall alloy compositions on that tie line after that the fraction of the faces has to be computed by taking the total length line that means this tie line how much line you are giving between the two faces you have to identify this line total length you have to identify you have to find out the total length of the tie line in the third point and in the fourth point you have to take the fraction of the other face that is to be determined that means you have two boundaries here since the point is lying between the two faces you have two boundaries on the either side is it not so first you need to find out the total length of the tie line at one point and the same way you have to find out what is the length of the composition of the tie line on the other face also at the two faces you need to find out the total length now after that what you have to do if the face percentage is desired is it not you need to find out what is the total weight percentage so in order to get that weight percentage what you have to do each fraction whatever each fraction you are getting on the either sides of the face regions you have to multiply with the 100 in order to get the total percentage of that composition with respect to the liquid phase as well as the solidus phase so in the employment of the liver rule and the tie line segment lengths the lengths are determined so this lengths are very very important in this case in the previous case only we are just trying to find out the intersections along the tie line and from the intersection we are just dropping and identifying the composition but in the liver rule method you have to measure the total length of the tie line and from that measurement of the tie line you have to identify what is the composition based upon the liver rule so how you are determining the total length of the tie, tie line means you have to di do directly the direct measurement using the millimeter scale okay from that uh, you can get easily what is the total length of the tie line and also what is the length along the liquid phase as well as the solid phase if you get these information it is very easy for us to find out what is the total weight percentage of the uh, compositions which is present in the phase amounts now for the same example if you consider that point b which is at 1250 degree centigrade and which is having a composition of 35 percent of nickel and 65 weight percentage of copper so for this if you want to find out the total phase amount what you have to do again you have to draw the tie line and this tie line has to be drawn between the two faces and you need to find out the total compositions which is falling on the tie line that is the second point and after that third point is what you need to find out the lengths of those tie lines between the two faces and after find outing those length you have to do the fractions and then you have to multiply the 100 in order to get the total percentage of this phase amounts now you can see this figure you can easily understand now i am drawing a face uh, tie line across this face clear so same almost uh, same like a tie line method after that the second point is what you have to measure the compositions so that means you have to measure the compositions at this point the tie line method so what is the composition at this point at this point you have to note the composition along the liquid and the composition along the solid you have to note down now after that 
what we have to do? You have to find out the lengths on the either faces. That means you have to find out this R. This R length is the length of the tie line with respect to the liquid. Similarly, the S distance is the length of the tie line with respect to the solidus. Okay, like that you have to differentiate the lengths either along the two faces, okay, in order to get the total weight percentages. Now, find out in this R and S values. So, what is the liver rule method we are finding out in here to compute? WL is the liver rule method is equal to S, that means the length of the tie line across this solder's line by summation of R plus S, that means summation of the liquid and solder's tie line. So, total length S by R plus S. Now, if you want to get the compositions, that means WL, what is C alpha here? The composition of the solders. So, in the previous case, we have calculated how much amount of compositions are there along the solders line that you have to substitute here. And what is CO here? CO is nothing but exact from point B, you are dropping a perpendicular. So, this is the composition weight percent at that point, CO. And again, what is CL here? CL is nothing but the composition along the solders and CL is the composition along the liquid state. So, using these two, you can easily find out what is the total percentage of the phase. After getting these fractions, you need to multiply with 100 to get the total phase amount. So, the main difference between the tie line method and liver rule. In the tie line, we are following only three steps. First is what? You have to draw a horizontal line. And this horizontal line has to intersect between the two faces. And from those intersections, you are dropping the perpendiculars on the horizontal axis to get the composition. That's it. That is the uh, tie line method. But coming to the liver rule method, what we are trying to do in the liver rule method, this uh, liver rule method is also used to find out the compositions when the point is lying between the two phase regions. So, in this case also, we are drawing a horizontal line that is a tie line between the two phases. And what we are trying to do, we are trying to locate what is the compositions, overall compositions on the tie line. And other, the third point is what? You need to calculate the lengths of the tie line along the two phase regions. Okay, along the two phase regions, you have to identify those lengths and from that length you have to do the fractions like this WL is equal to S by R plus S these fractions you need to do and with respect to the compositions this is with respect to the lengths of the tie line and this is with respect to the compositions so these two fractions you are getting after getting these two fractions what is the fifth point you have to multiply with 100 in order to get the total phase amount present in that two phase region so here you can see clearly the composition need to be specified in terms of only one of the constitution by binary alloy. So what is the composition we are taking here? CO is 35 percentage of weight of nickel and C alpha 42 weight percentage of nickel and CL is 31.5 weight percentage of nickel. So for this you need to calculate. So all the values, whatever the values we are getting at this point, CO is given 35 weight percentage of nickel is the CO value. And CL is 31.5 weight percentage of nickel and C alpha is 42.5 weight percentage of nickel. So all the values we are getting. So these fractions you have to use to get the overall composition. So from this data, we have the formula of the phase rule, liver rule method. So you are getting these fractions in terms of lengths of the tie line. That is R by R plus S. Similarly, we are getting these fractions in terms of compositions. So, compositions are given. CO is given as 35 and CL is given as 31.5 and C alpha is 42.5 and CL is 31.5. Now, if you substitute the fractions, you are getting it as 0.32. So, after getting this fraction, just multiply with 100. So, you are getting 32 percentage. So, overall composition of phase amount present at this point B is 32%. So like this, you need to find out the compositions with the help of liver rule. And also, 
with the help of trial and method, you can find out the compositions. So this is the formula which is used to find out the phase amounts. And the previous pipeline is to find out the percentage of composition with respect to the copper and nickel and the temperature. So this is the procedures you need to follow to interpret the phase diagrams based upon the liver rule and the pilot procedures. And if you want to uh, go to the references, you can go with this introduction to physical metallurgy by Dr. Michael Hill and essential of material science and engineering by Thomson Press. And uh, the other book is material science and engineering, Everest publications. Next one is material science and metallurgy. So these are all some of the references where you can find how to find out these phase diagrams, how to calculate the compositions and how to find out the percentage of phase amounts present in those phases and what are the procedures you need to follow when the point is lying in a single phase and what are the procedures you need to follow when the point is lying in a double phase. So two different procedures you have to find out these percentage of compositions present in the phases with respect to temperature and the compositions. Okay. Thank you for this session. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.